Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome to our first Stanley Cup Finals rematch of NHL 19. So if you guys were with the channel, you would know that in NHL 18, I did 8 Stanley Cup Finals rematch episodes. Well, I'm bringing the series back for NHL 19. Exact same rules, um, exact same kind of stuff. Uh, if you did not actually subscribe to me in NHL 18 and you never watched my Stanley Cup Finals rematch episodes, well, I will give you guys a bit of a breakdown on how this stuff works. So basically, I recreate two teams from a Stanley Cup Finals in NHL history, and then I replay them against each other to see if there is a similar or different outcome. Some of the Stanley Cup Finals that I do have controversy, like I did the 1999 Finals, where Brett Hull's skate was in the crease, some people say, some people don't. This Stanley Cup Finals had no real controversy in it, uh, but anyways, it was the Edmonton Oilers and the New York Islanders. The two of these teams actually were both dynasties in the 80s and early 90s. So the, basically the New York Islanders, they were coming off their fourth straight Stanley Cup win. They were looking for a fifth against the Oilers. This was actually a rematch of the 1983 Stanley Cup Finals as well. Uh, basically in the 1983 Finals, the Islanders swept the Edmonton Oilers for their fourth straight cup. And now going into this 1984 Cup Finals... The Oilers actually beat the Islanders in five games to win their first Stanley Cup of five that they would win in a seven-year span. So other than our Stanley Cup Finals rematches, I want to let you guys know that there's also going to be probably like gold medal rematches, which are going to come every second month. So next month you might see a gold medal rematch instead of a Stanley Cup Finals rematch, and then it'll alternate back to a Cup Finals rematch. Anyways, so before we get started, let's show you guys the jerseys for both teams, starting with the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, so here is the jerseys for the Edmonton Oilers, starting off with their nice home jersey, because back in the 80s, like I said, it was the white jerseys, and then the darker ones were the away ones. This looks kind of similar to what they had, I think it was, they might still have it actually this season, but I think the blue was a bit darker if I'm not mistaken. And then their away jersey is this nice blue jersey, which everybody has seen before, really nice jersey, I really like this one. Um, and then obviously they didn't have alternates back in the 80s. Now here's the uniforms for the New York Islanders, as you can see it has not changed really at all since then. Uh, the blue might be a bit different or the orange might be a tiny bit like lighter, uh, but other than that it looks pretty much the same as what they have now. And then their away jersey is the blue jersey. So yeah, they're pretty much the exact same as they are now. So now that you guys seen the jerseys, let's get into the rosters for the defending cup champion New York Islanders. Okay, so starting off here on the left side, we have Clark Gillies, who is a four-time Stanley Cup champion and Hall of Famer. Uh, he was also a pretty big guy coming at six foot three, two 215 pounds. Over the course of his 14-year career, he played with only two teams, those being the Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres. During that span, he played 958 games, scoring 319 goals and assisting on 378 goals for 697 points. He was also a very good player in his own end as he was a career plus 245 and racked up 1,025 penalty minutes. Now at center here we have Brian Trotte who was a 6 time Stanley Cup champion. He won 4 cups with the Islanders and 2 as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. You guys would have known that if you remember my 1991 Stanley Cup Finals rematch episode against the Minnesota North Stars. He was on that team. He is also like Gillies in the sense that he is a Hall of Famer. Over the course of his career, Brian put up 524 goals, 901 assists for 1,425 points over 1,279 games. He was also a career plus 449, which is pretty insane, and he had 912 penalty minutes. He retired at the end of the 1993-94 season at the age of 37. At right wing, we have Mike Bossy, who is a four-time Stanley Cup champion and Hall of Famer, just like his line mates. Mike had a short career playing only 752 games and retiring at the age of 30 because of back problems. However, during those 10 seasons, he put up 573 goals, which is the most goals uh, per game average in NHL history. It was like 0.7 something. He also had 553 assists for 1,126 points. He was also career plus 380 and had only 210 penalty minutes. His highest goal total came in the 78-79 season where he put up 69 goals. Like back in these days, everybody scored like crazy goal amounts. 69 goals in a season, that does not happen 
at all nowadays. Now on the second line here we have Greg Gilbert. Now Greg Gilbert won three Stanley Cups, two as the member of the New York Islanders and one with the Rangers in 1994. Speaking of 1994, that's actually our next Stanley Cup Finals rematch episode so you'll see the Canucks and the Rangers play each other for a rematch at the Cup. Anyways, back on Greg Gilbert, Greg played 837 career games, adding up 150 goals, 228 assists for 378 points. He was also a career plus 107 and had 576 penalty minutes. Now at center here we have Brent Sutter, who was one of the five Sutter brothers in the NHL at this point in time. One of which was that his brother was Duane, and Duane's on the fourth line as you can see down below. At this time, his other brothers, Brian was with St. Louis, Daryl was with Chicago, and Rich and Ron were both in Philadelphia. Brent is the father of Brandon Sutter, who currently plays for the Vancouver Canucks. He's also the uncle to the other Senators like Brett, Brody, Lucas, and Riley. Brent retired in the 1997-98 season with 829 points, 1,054 penalty minutes, and a career plus 166. He was a big part of the Islanders' Cup wins in the 1982 and 83 season. On the right side, we have Bob Nystrom, who was the father of former NHLer Eric Nystrom, who played with the Flames, Wild, Stars, and Predators. Bob played his entire career with the New York Islanders. He played 900 games, putting up 513 points, 1,248 penalty minutes, and was also a career plus 110. He retired in the 85-86 season. So you could tell with a lot of these players on the Islanders so far that they all had really good career plus minus because the Islanders were so dynamite in the 80s. Now into the third line here we have John Tonelli. Now John Tonelli, who is actually the cousin of former uh, Predators and Edmonton Oilers tough guy Ryan Jones, like the guy that's like retired maybe a couple seasons ago, like 32-year-old guy. It's kind of weird that they're cousins, even though John Tonelli's a lot older. John played 1,028 games during his career from the 75-76 season to 1991-92. Uh, he actually started in the WHA. He's been playing, or he played that long. He had 836 points, 911 penalty minutes, and was a career plus 221. His best season came in 84-85, where he had 100 points in 80 games. Now at center here, we have a young 18-year-old Pat Lafontaine. During the regular season this year, Pat played 15 games, putting up 19 points, 13 of which were goals. He also helped in the playoffs, putting up 9 points in 16 games. Over his NHL career, Pat played with all three New York-based teams, including the Sabres, the Rangers, and the Islanders. He put up 1,013 points in 865 games. He had to retire kind of early because I think he had some sort of concussion problems, but I could be wrong. Uh, his best season came uh, in 1992-93 where he had 148 points in 84 games. On the right wing here we have Patrick Flatley, who was actually drafted 21st overall in 1982 by the New York Islanders. He never won a cup with them as well as this was his first season. In 780 career games, he put up 510 points in 686 penalty minutes. He represented Canada at the 1984 Olympic Games in Sarajevo where he had 6 points in 7 games. He played only with 2 teams in his NHL career, those being the Islanders and the Rangers in his final season. Now into the 4th line here we have Anders Kaler or Anders Kaler, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, he played only 6 years in the NHL as his first season was in 1979-80 where he was already 27 years of age. Despite only playing 383 games, Kaler put up 211 points and won 3 Stanley Cups over that span. He was a a big contributor in the 1982-83 Stanley Cup Finals where he had 15 points in 20 games. However, this postseason he could only put up 4 points in 17 games. Now at center here we have Butch Goring who like wore one of the weirdest hockey helmets in NHL history. I think he was one of the first to actually wear a helmet really regularly. Um, but yeah, his helmet was really weird looking. It looked almost like he was just like a skateboarder or something. Apart from that though, Butch was a really solid player. He played 1,107 games over a 16 year span playing home 375 goals and assisting on 513 other goals for 888 points. He was actually one also not to take much penalty minutes as he had only 102 penalty minutes over his career. He also played with the LA Kings and the Boston Bruins. Now to round out the dressed forwards we have Dwayne Sutter who as I said previously is one of the many Sutter brothers including Brent who's on the same team. Dwayne wasn't as offensively minded as his brother however he was physical. Uh, Dwayne had 1,333 penalty minutes in seven 
731 games. He also managed to put up 342 points. His son is Brody Sutter, who is currently like plays in the SM Liga, but I believe he was like a Carolina or Winnipeg prospect at one point. I could be wrong with that. Dwayne was a part of all four Stanley Cups the Islanders won in the 1980s. Now into the defensive core, we have on the top pairing Dennis Potvin or Denny Potvin who was one of the all-time leading point defensemen in NHL history. Over 1,060 games, he put up 310 goals, assisted on 742 others for 1,052 points, only 8 points off of being point per game. He also racked up 1,356 penalty minutes. In terms of his plus minus, he was a career plus 456 and was the captain of this Islanders squad. He retired at the end of the 87-88 season, after 15 years. Now we have his defense partner, Stefan Pearson, who was drafted in the 14th round of the NHL draft in 1974. He didn't score a lot of goals, however, he was a great passer and played solid defensively in his own end. In 622 career games, he scored 52 goals, had 317 assists for 369 points. He also had 574 penalty minutes and was a plus 176. He left the NHL at the end of the 85-86 season to play in Sweden where he would officially retire at the end of the 89-90 season. He won four cups in his tenure with the Islanders. Now in the second pairing here we have another Swedish defender that being Thomas Jonsson who spent eight years in the NHL and won two Stanley Cups with the Islanders. He also played 20 games with the Edmonton Oilers in the 88-89 campaign. He would then return to Sweden to finish out his playing career in 1998-99. In just 552 NHL games, he put up 85 goals, 259 assists for 344 points. He was also a career plus 64 and had 482 penalty minutes. Now on his right side, we have Ken Morrow, who has also had a really short NHL career, playing only 550 NHL games from 1979-80 to 1988-89. He was more of a defensively minded defenseman as he had a career plus minus of plus 142. He also had 105 points, which majority of them were assists. He was a part of all four Stanley Cup wins. Now on the top six pairing, we have Paul Boutillier, who is an offensive minded defenseman. He had 110 points in 288 career games and was only a career plus one. However, he was also very physical, putting up 358 penalty minutes. Paul played in the NHL till the age of 24, where he was then assigned to the AHL he would then split time in 89-90 between the AHL and the Swiss League before staying in the Swiss League indefinitely in 1990-91. He would stop playing in the like like in professional hockey in general at the age of 27. He was actually an assistant coach of the Belleville Senators down in the AHL last year. And now as a defensive partner, we have Dave Langevin, who also had a short career playing 513 NHL games. Dave won four cups with the Islanders and was more known for his defensive and physical play. He had 530 penalty minutes and was a career plus 103 and he only had 119 points, only 12 of which were actually goals. He also played for the Edmonton Oilers back in the day, but that was actually when they were part of the WHA, not the NHL, so they don't actually put into his NHL transcript that he actually played for the Oilers. Other than that, in the NHL, he played for the North Stars and the Los Angeles Kings. Now into the men between the pipes, we have starter Billy Smith, who scored one goal in his NHL career, and that was in 1979-80 against the Colorado Rockies, I believe it was called at the time. He played 670 nine career games with both the Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings. Only five of them were actually with the Kings because then he was eventually traded. Anyhow, Billy racked up 305 wins, 233 losses, 105 ties, 22 shutouts, a 3.18 goals against average, and an 895 save percentage. He also had 490 penalty minutes, which puts him second to Ron Hextall in penalty minutes by a goaltender. Billy also took home four Stanley Cups, one Jennings, one Conn Smythe, one Vesna, and became an NHL Hall of Famer in 1993. Now his backup is Roland or Roly Melanson. Roland played with five NHL teams from the Islanders to the North Stars to the Kings to the Devils to the Canadians all over 11 years. He played 291 career games, posting a career record of 129, 106, and 33. He also had 6 shutouts at 3.64 goals against average and an 8.83 save percentage. He is currently a goaltending coach of the New Jersey Devils. Now in the depth players, we have Billy Carroll, who didn't really have much of a career. He won 4 Stanley Cups 
three with the Islanders and one with the Oilers, but he played only 322 career games and only had 84 career points. He also had 113 penalty minutes, so he didn't really do much at all. Like, he wasn't taking a whole lot of penalties, and he wasn't really putting up much points, so he's more of like a bottom six two-way forward, I guess you could say. Next up, we have Matt Howland, who had a really short career of only 152 career games, but between the Islanders and North Stars. Over that span, he had only 31 career points and 193 penalty minutes. He would leave the NHL for one season in Switzerland and then play his final five seasons back home in Sweden. Next up, we have Wayne Merrick, who is also a pretty semi-decent player for a depth guy. Merrick played 774 career games with St. Louis, the California Golden Seals, and the Cleveland Barons before he would retire at the end of the season. He had 191 goals, 265 assists for 456 points. He was also a career plus 23 and had 303 penalty minutes. And now on to our last depth guy is an also a pretty good career for this guy. It's Bob Bourne. He played in 964 games, putting 258 goals past the goalies, assisting on 324 other goals for 582 points. He was also a career plus 118 and had 605 penalty minutes. During his career, he played with the, both the Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings. Also, besides taking home four Stanley Cups, he actually took home the Bill Masterman Memorial trophy in the 1987 88 season now on to our defenders we have gordonin who was the mill of three kids his older brother peter laced up in 13 nhl games while his younger brother kevin who played a lengthy 19 year career and was the most successful of them all you guys probably know kevin denine because he's been like a head coach and stuff and whatnot Gord wasn't as successful as kevin but played a lot more games than peter as he played 528 career games he scored 16 goals and had 90 assists for 106 points. He also was a career minus 60, so he wasn't really good in his own end, and he had 695 penalty minutes. Despite playing 13 years in the NHL, he never won a Stanley Cup. And finally, to wrap up the Islanders, we have another Gord, and that is Gord Elaine, or Gord Lane, um, who in a sense was a very similar player to Gord Denine, actually, because uh, he was exactly like him in the sense that they would both Putter up around the same amount of career points, but he was a lot more physical. Lane played 539 games, scoring 19 goals, and had 94 assists for 113 points. However, he was a career minus 16 and had 1,228 penalty minutes. He split his career between Washington and the Islanders before retiring after a season in the AHL in 86-87. Okay, so now that you guys have seen the Islanders roster, let's jump into the roster for the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, so starting off this lethal and young first line, we have Mark Messier, who also all you guys should know. Mark won six Stanley Cups, including five with the Oilers and one with New York Rangers in 1994. Mark played 1,756 career games, scoring 694 goals and assisting on 1,193 other goals for 1,887 points. He also had 1,912 penalty minutes and was a career plus 211. On ice, he was a great leader as he got older because obviously he helped them, the Rangers get to the Cup finals and after Gretzky left he also got the Oilers the cup in 1990. His final season came in 2003-04 where he still put up 43 points in 76 games at the age of 43. Now if you don't know this man you might want to consider being a hockey fan because you all should obviously know who Wayne Gretzky is. Uh, best producer in NHL history, racking up 2,857 points in 1,487 games. He was also a career plus 520 and had 577 penalty minutes. Wayne won a lot of hardware including 4 Stanley Cups, 5 Lady Bings, 9 Hart Trophies, 5 Lester Beer Pearson Awards, 10 Art Ross Trophies, and 2 Conn Smythes. Plus he was named to 15 NHL All-Star teams over his illustrious career. During the 83-84 season, he had 87 goals, 118 assists for 205 points in 74 games. Like, <laughs> that's an unheard of, obviously, now today's NHL because it's just too much skill. While in the playoffs, he didn't slow down either as he put up 35 points in 19 games this year. Now on the right wing, we have another legend that you guys should recognize, and that is Yari Curry. Curry, like Messier and Gretzky, were all 23 years of age at this point in time. In 64 regular season games, he had 52 goals, 61 assists for 113 points. Over his 1,251 game career, he had 601 goals, 797 assists for 1,398 points. Also, he was a career plus 304 and had 545 penalty minutes. Curry played with five teams including the Edmonton Oilers, 
the LA Kings, the New York Rangers, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and the Colorado Avalanche. He left the NHL in the 1990-91 season for the Italian League, but would return to the NHL in 1991-92. He won five Stanley Cups with the Oilers, was named to five NHL All-Star Games, and won the Lady Bing in 1984-85. He was also inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2001. Now in the second line here, we have Glenn Anderson, who also, if you didn't know, is another Hall of Famer. He was inducted more recently in 2008. Glenn won six Stanley Cubs, all with Marc Messier, including the one in 1994 with the New York Rangers. He played 1,129 games, scoring 498 goals, assisting on 601 others for 1,099 points. He was also a career plus 201 and had 1,120 penalty minutes. Glenn played for the Oilers, the Maple Leafs, the Rangers, and the Blues before he left the NHL at the end of the 95-96 campaign. He will play in 1996-97 in the Swiss League and the Alpen Liga for HC Bolzano, which is in Italy. Now at center here we have Ken Linsman. For some reason I always thought his last name was Linesman, but it's Linsman I think. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, Ken was a very aggressive forward, but he also had offensive skill. In 860 games, he had 256 goals, put up 551 assists for 807 points. He was also a career plus 221 and had 1,725 penalty minutes. He won only one Stanley Cup, that being in the season in 1984, as he would leave for the Boston Bruins the following season. Now on the right side here, we have Willie Lindstrom and his awesome old school's mustache. Uh, there will be a picture up so you guys can see anyways. Willie had a short 582 game career, but a pretty solid one to say the least. During that span, he had 161 goals, 162 assists for 323 points. He also had 200 penalty minutes and was a career plus minus of minus 2. He left the NHL at the end of the 86-87 season for his home country of Sweden, where he would play three more seasons before wrapping up his career as a 38-year-old in 89-90. Now on the third line here, we have Dave Semenko, who is more known for his physical play. He played 575 career games and had 153 points, as well as 1,175 penalty minutes. Dave won two Stanley Cups and played with three teams. Those three teams were the Oilers, the Whalers, and the Maple Leafs. He retired at the end of the 1987-88 season at the age of 30. At center, we have Kevin McClelland, who the Oilers acquired during the 83-84 season from Pittsburgh. McClellan played with three other teams, those being Detroit, Toronto, and Winnipeg. He was originally drafted by the Hartford Whalers in 1980. His last NHL season came in 1993-94. His career totals were 588 games played, 68 goals, 112 assists for 180 points. He also had a whopping 1,670 penalty minutes and was a career minus 36. He was a part of four of the five cups that Oilers won. On the right side, we have Pat Hughes, who played with six teams over his 573 games career. Those teams being Montreal, Pittsburgh, Edmonton, Buffalo, St. Louis, and Hartford. Hughes won three cups, including two with the Oilers in 84-85, and he also won one with the Montreal Canadiens in 1979. He retired with 130 goals, 128 assists, for 258 career points. He also had 646 penalty minutes and was a career minus 24. Now on the fourth line here, we have Dave Hunter, who is the brother of former NHLers Dale and Mark. Like his brothers, Dave was physical but had some offensive capabilities. Dave would play 746 career games, scoring 133 goals and 190 assists for 323 points. He was also a career plus 112 and 918 penalty minutes. He was a part of three of the five cups that the Edmonton Oilers won. At center here we have Pat Conacher who only won one Stanley Cup in his NHL career, that being this season. He came close to winning his second in 1993 with the Los Angeles Kings, but lost to the Montreal Canadiens. He played with six teams, including the Rangers, Oilers, Devils, Kings, Flames, and Islanders. Pat played 521 games, scoring 63 goals and playing up 76 assists for 139 career points. He also had 235 penalty minutes and was a minus 37. And no, he's no relation to Corey Conacher or the like Lionel Conacher family. He's just a different Conacher in general. Now to round out the dress forwards, we have Yaroslav Puzar, who played only four NHL seasons but won three Stanley Cups. He joined the NHL in the 82-83 season at the age of 31. During his 186 career games, he put up 34 goals 
and got 48 assists for 82 points. He was also a career plus 40 and had 137 penalty minutes. He played with the Oilers from the 1982-83 season to 1984-85. He would then go to Germany for a season before returning for one more season in Edmonton. He then played in Germany until 1991-92 at the age of 40. Now into the top defensive pairing, we have Paul Coffey, who a lot of you also should recognize. Paul played 21 years in the NHL from the age of 19 to the age of 39. He was known for his offensive play and his physical play. He played 1,409 games, scoring 396 goals and assisting on 1,135 others for 1,531 points. He is pretty much like the Dennis Potvin of the Oilers in that sense. He was also a career plus 298 and had 1,802 penalty minutes. He won four Stanley Cubs, including three with the Edmonton Oilers and one with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He could have technically won five if he would have stayed with the Pittsburgh Penguins, but he was shipped off to Los Angeles in 91-92, I think. His final season came in 2001 with the Boston Bruins. His defensive partner here we have Randy Gregg. Now Randy Gregg only played 474 career NHL games in the NHL from 82-83 onwards as he was already 26 years of age. However, during that span he scored 41 goals and assisted 152 others for 193 points. He was also a career plus 170 and had 333 penalty minutes. He won 5 cups with his hometown Oilers. He retired at the end of the 91-92 season as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Now into the second pairing, we have Kevin Lowe, who a lot of you might recognize as well. He was a head coach and a general manager of the Oilers also at one point in time. He spent 19 years in the NHL between the Edmonton Oilers and the New York Rangers. In 1,254 career games, Lowe put up 84 goals, 347 assists for 431 points. He was also a career plus 260 and had 1,498 penalty minutes. He won six Stanley Cups, including five with the Oilers, and one more in 1994 with the Rangers with teammates Glenn Anderson and Mark Messier. On his right, we have Charlie Huddy, who is a part of all five Edmonton Oilers Cup wins. He didn't score a lot of goals, as he had 99 goals in 1,017 games. He also had 354 assists for 453 points. He was a dominant plus 235 and had 785 penalty minutes. Charlie also played with the Kings, Sabres, and Blues and retired at the end of the 96-97 season. Now into the top six pairing, we have Lee Fogelin, or uh, Folin, I don't know how it's pronounced, I think it's Fogelin. But anyway, he won two Stanley Cups over his career, both of them were with the Oilers. Lee posted 44 goals, 194 assists for 238 points in 924 games. He was also a career plus 181 and had 1,318 penalty minutes. Lee played with only two clubs in his NHL career, those both being the Oilers and the Sabres. Lee would retire at the end of the 86-87 at the age of 31. Now to round out the dress defensive core, we have Don Jackson. Don was a physical defenseman and his numbers showed that. In 315 career games, he had 68 points, was a career plus 78, and had 640 penalty minutes. He also played with the Minnesota North Stars and New York Rangers. He retired at the end of the 86-87 season at the age of 30. Now in goal we have Grant Fear, who a lot of you guys should know. Grant was in his third season in the NHL. Over the course of this playoffs he played 16 games going 11-4 with a 2.99 goals against average and a 9-11 save percentage. While his career stats in 868 games were 403, 295, and 14. He also had 25 shutouts, a 3.38 goals against average, and an 887 save percentage. Uh, during this playoffs, actually, he got injured from a bump from Pat LaFontaine in game number three, so Andy Moog played the last two games of the series. Fear also played with the Maple Leafs, the Sabres, the Kings, the Blues, and the Flames before he retired at the end of the 99-2000 season. He, like quite a few of his teammates, was also a Hall of Famer. He was inducted in 2003. And his backup is Andy Moog, who was a pretty underrated and overlooked goaltender. He was the seventh round pick of the Oilers in 1980. In 713 games, he went 372, 209, and 88 with 28 shutouts, a 3.14 goals against average, and an 891 save percentage. And he won three cups with the Oilers and actually lost to them too when he was with the Boston Bruins in 1990. He also played with the Dallas Stars and the Montreal Canadiens before he retired at the end of the 97-98 season.
season at the age of 37. Now to the depth forwards, we have Raimo Suminen, who played 151 NHL games over his career. During those games, though, he put up 36 goals, 40 assists for 76 points. He was also a career plus 6 and had 35 penalty minutes. He would leave the NHL at age of 25 in 87-88 and play overseas in Finland and Switzerland, where he actually dominated. Now the final depth guy we have is Dave Lumley, who played 437 career games scoring 98 goals, getting 160 assists for 258 points. He was also a career plus 39 and had 673 penalty minutes. Dave played also for the Montreal Canadiens and the Hartford Whalers before he retired at the end of the 86-87 season at the age of 32. Now depth defender wise we have Larry Melnick who as far as I know isn't related to Eugene Melnick at all so that's good. Larry was a physical defender as he had 686 penalty minutes in 432 games. He also had 74 career points and was a minus 34. He also played for the Bruins, Rangers, and Canucks before he retired in 89-90 at the age of 29. And to round out our rosters, we have Rick Chartres, who was technically born in Venezuela, which is pretty cool, uh, but then his family moved to Pennsylvania. Rick won five Stanley Cups, including four with the Montreal Canadiens and one with the Edmonton Oilers. So just imagine if he would have stayed with the Edmonton Oilers longer, he could have technically won like maybe like close to 10 Stanley Cups, uh, but he only stayed for one of the Edmonton Oilers Cup wins. He also played with the Los Angeles Kings and the New York Rangers. Rick had 92 points in 420 games as well as 399 penalty minutes. He retired from the NHL at age of 29 at the end of the season. So, like I said, if he would have stayed for all the other Edmonton Oilers Cup wins, like this guy could have won like 8 or 9 Stanley Cups potentially. Okay, so now that you guys have seen the rosters, let's get into the actual simulation and see who wins the Stanley Cup for the 1984 rematch. Okay, guys, so here we go. Um, one thing I want to note, though, is for some reason there's not a way to turn off retired jersey numbers in uh like in the playoff mode so for some reason it switched Gretzky to 97 so hopefully that means like people like Denny Poffin and stuff like that their numbers are not changed because they're actually retired by their organizations so if that is the case we might have a bit of a problem with accurate jersey numbers but it's just because those guys jersey numbers are actually retired so anyways let's get into game number one at the Nassau Memorial Coliseum, or I think it might have been just Nassau Coliseum at this point in time. Let's see if the Islanders or the Oilers could come out here on top first period. And it's one nothing for the Oilers, and look who it is. What a surprise. Wayne Gretzky gets his name on the scoreboard. Shots are 11-7 to in favor of the Islanders, but it is currently one to nothing. Second period, and it is one to one. Mike Bossy tying it up for the Rangers, so we're getting our big goal scorers scoring goals. So that's kind of interesting. Shots are heavily in the Islanders' favor, 24 to 16. Let's see what happens here in the third period. Like in this actual game, uh, number one, the Edmonton Oilers would win this game by a score of one to nothing. The only goal coming from Kevin McClelland. So. This isn't accurate so far, and Bob Nystrom gives the Islanders the lead in Game 1. Damn. The veteran presence of the New York Islanders. I might have made the Islanders' offense too good, I don't know, because they're rated like an eight or 93 total, and then the Edmonton's rated like a 94. So the Islanders are going to take Game 1 by a score of 2-1. to one. Final shots were heavily in the Islanders' favor, so not a good game for the Edmonton Oilers. Grant Fear kept them in it, but... Just could not get it done. So Gretzky from Coffee and Curry, Bossy from Gillies and Johnson, and then Nystrom from Boutillier and Brent Sutter. Three stars in game number one Billy Smith with 24 saves, Grant Fuhr, second star with 32 saves, and Bob Nystrom, the third star with the game winning goal. Okay. So game number two, before we get into it, I wanted to mention that the scoreboard was actually 6-1 to one for the New York Islanders in this game. Uh, so that was the only game they actually won. Uh, so hopefully we get that for the Oilers this time around so we can maybe have a similar outcome. If not, it doesn't really matter, but let's see what happens in game number two. Will the Islanders take a 2-0 series lead first period, and it is scoreless. Shots are in the Oilers' favor this time, 13-7. But it looks like Billy Smith is having a good simulation. Second period, and it is 2-1 for the Islanders. Damn. 
The veteran presence of the Islanders, John Tonelli opens the scoring, followed by Mark Messier for the Edmonton Oilers, so another big gun. And then Dwayne Sutter gets the goal for the Islanders to put them ahead, despite their being outshot 28-19 to going into the third. Let's see what happens in this third period. Let's see the Oilers could tie it up. They need a big play from somebody like one of their big stars. A power play of chance for the Islanders, they didn't score on it. Getting down to the last five minutes of the game, Edmonton needs a hero here. Power play again for the Islanders, they can't score. And again, we're going to get a 2-1 final for the New York Islanders. So Edmonton has been lacking offense, which is weird. Their top line should be scoring. So Tonelli from Flatley and LaFontaine, Messier from Coffey and Curry, and then Sutter from Goring and Potvin. So another great game from Billy Smith and Grant Fuhrer actually too. Dwayne Sutter gets second star with the game winning goal, but Billy Smith stole that game for the Islanders. I am surprised that Edmonton hasn't been able to find their offense yet. They're going to need to play good on home ice if they want a chance to win this. And now we're at the Northlands Coliseum. It's actually weird because games 3, 4, and 5 are all in the Northlands Coliseum. So I don't know if the playoff format was different back in those days. I don't know exactly. But anyways, game number 3, Northlands Coliseum. Let's see if Edmonton can get a win for their home crowd. First period and oh wow, okay. Yeah, this is not good for the Oilers. 4-1 to one for the Islanders after 1. So this is almost actually like their 6-1 to one game that they had in game number uh, game number 2 in real life. So Denny Potvin gets 2 quick goals, 5 seconds apart. Jeez, how the hell does he do it 5 seconds apart? And then like a minute later, Brian Trottier makes it 3 nothing. That's it for Fuhrer. And then Paul Coffey scores. And then Anders Keller beats... Uh, Andy Moog and it's a 4-1 lead for the Islanders after one four goals on nine shots Jeez, Edmonton needs to play better defensively second period and oh my god five to one Pat LaFontaine this is looking like a really quick series unless the Edmonton Oilers could rally from a three nothing series but damn Pat Connerker makes it a five to two game but yeah, Gretzky's been like really nowhere in this series so far. One goal in game number one, but he hasn't really done much since. Last five minutes of the third period, the Islanders are going to be taking a 3-0 series lead and have a chance to win the Stanley Cup in Edmonton. Damn, this is almost exactly like what happened in 83. Like I said, the sweep that the Islanders had, this might happen again. Podfin from Bossy and Gillies, Podfin from Bossy and Trottier, Trottier from Gillies and Bossy. Damn, Bossy with like four assists in the first period. Coffee from Curry, Keller from uh, Goring and Bossy, LaFontaine from Flatley and Tonelli, and Conacher from Coffee. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's not looking good for the uh, Edmonton Oilers. Bossy's just been dominant. Five points in three games. Most of them assist, which is weird. Okay, so it comes down to this. Will the Edmonton Oilers survive, or will the Islanders sweep the Edmonton Oilers in the Cup Finals for the second straight season, technically? Let's see if that happens here. First period, and it's 2 nothing Oilers. There you go. They finally get a 2 nothing lead out. Glenn Anderson and Dave Semenko. Shots are 11-8 in favor of the Oilers. Second period, and it's 3-0 Oilers. There you go, Glenn Anderson with two goals. Looking like the Oilers are finally going to take home a W. Well, take away a W. They're on home ice already anyways. So it looks like the Islanders will have a chance to win the cup on home ice. I think they won a couple of their Stanley Cups during their dynasty on home ice. Uh, Willie Lindstrom makes it 4-0 for the Edmonton Oilers. Not a good game for Billy Smith, this one. Brian Trotje is going to break uh, Fuhrer's shutout, but it is a 4-1 to final for the Edmonton Oilers. Let's see if they could rally from this. If they could win two more in a row, which they technically can, it could go to a Game 7. So Anderson from Lindsman and Huddy, Semenko from McClelland and Hughes, and then Anderson from Lindstrom and Lindstrom from Anderson and Coffey. So Anderson and Lindstrom playing pretty good together. Anderson gets first star, Fear the second star, and Lindstrom the third. 
Okay, so we're headed back to the Nassau Coliseum. I think it's pronounced Nassau. Nassau? Yeah, it might be Nassau Coliseum. Let's see if the Islanders can win the cup on home ice, or will it come to an end here in... Or, well, yeah, let's see if they can win the cup here, or will the Edmonton Oilers be able to force a Game 6 back on home ice? Here we go. This is a big game for both clubs. First period, and it's 2 nothing Islanders. That's not the start you want if you're the Oilers, because like I said, that is probably not going to be a comeback now from that. Clark Gillies with both goals. Um, I think, actually, I forgot to mention, I think he's like the father or like some re relation to, um, what's his name, Colton Gillies. that used to play in the NHL. I could be wrong with that. Shots are 10-6 to in favor of the Islanders. Let's see what happens here in the second. And it's 3-0 Islanders. Brian Trottier. Yeah, that top line's coming through, so... We're going to sim down to the last like two minutes or so of the game and then I'm like, going to let you guys watch the rest of it and see if the Islanders could take home that cup like it looks like they're going to do. Anderson scores to make it a 3-1 to one game. If they get another soon, it might be a closer game than we expect. I'm going to put it down to four times. Power play for the Islanders. They don't score on it. Down to the last five minutes of the game. Once you get down to two minutes, so that's when I'll let you guys watch. And yeah, I'm going to let you guys watch now. And you guys can see the Islanders looking like they're going to take home their fourth straight Stanley, or fifth straight Stanley Cup. And it looks like the Edmonton Oilers dynasty is not going to start here yet. But it will probably start, like I would assume, in a couple seasons after this if we were to do more. So I'll let you guys watch, and I'll see you guys at the end of it. If you're just with us, it's been a tremendous bit of hockey so far, and more to come. The Oilers control from the faceoff. Snapping a pass to Lynn. Puck free, roadblock by Gillies. That was a big hit. Lynn's not going to be too happy with that. He didn't have his head up, wasn't aware of everybody around him, and then he got steamrolled. Not sure who made the hit, but that is a big one. Pass attempt to Lindstrom. Edmonton's carrying it up the wing. We are in the last minute of regulation time. The Oilers yank their goalie to try and get this back. Critical face-off, and they won it. Now what? Points it. Muscled long to Gray. Took that away in his own zone. Kicked away. He fanned on it. Recollected. Driving in from no man's land. Gathered up again by Coffey. Pitching this one to Mestre. Mestre slashed, and the arm of the referee is up. A penalty will be coming. Moro's getting a minor for slashing. Back in the era of wood sticks, this would really hurt. That's a slash. Edmonton's power play gets another chance to operate. Hasn't been effective yet. Well, their power play hasn't come through for them yet. Here's another opportunity. See if they can take advantage of them. From childhood, the daydream of getting to hold 35 pounds of history, and it's about to come true. They will win the biggest prize. And the game is over. The series is over. New York's won the Stanley Cup. Do you believe the celebration going on? As you can imagine, an incredibly emotional scene here down on the ice where the players leap over the boards, the coaches are hugging each other, the Stanley Cup is theirs, and no one can ever take that away.
You go through the handshake lineup and there is sportsmanship to be shown, but it's hard to let go of the intensity of a long and bitter series. The man chosen playoff MVP gets the Conn Smythe Trophy. Boy, is this ever well deserved. This is a tremendous award that probably means more in the coming days than it does now. You don't dream of winning the Conn Smythe, you dream of the Stanley Cup. It's often said it's the hardest prize to win because it takes eight weeks. And by tradition, the captain is the first to hold it high. You can see that the captain can't wait to get this trophy up over his head. It's presented to him. He almost wants to snatch it from the commissioner's hands so he can get it up over his head. There's so much going on on the ice right now. I wonder if the players are able to soak it all in or if it goes by so fast that the time that they really understand is when they look at it on video later on. This is outstanding to see how happy these players are. And the final event of any Stanley Cup celebration. What we see on the ice last is everyone gathered together for a very happy Stanley Cup team picture. So there you guys have it. The New York Islanders have won the Stanley Cup. And Mike Bossy took home the Conn Smythe with like seven points over those five games. Or, yeah, five games. So, Clark Gillies gets the first start in this game with two goals. Billy Smith gets the second start. And Brian Trottier the third. Okay, so. Let's just do a quick little wrap-up in player points. See who got what done for which teams. Obviously, we know Bossy got it done for the Islanders. But who did well for the Oilers? Because I think Gretzky was actually not that good in that game. Or, that entire series. So, we actually had a... a similar outcome in a way to what the actual Stanley Cup Finals was because technically the Oilers won in five but this time around it was the Islanders so kind of cool there okay so let's go first to the New York Islanders so Mike Bossy seven points in five games and he was a plus seven Clark Gillies six points Brian Trottier five points Potvin four points Tonelli and Goring, three points. LaFontaine, Janssen, Flatley, two points. And then Nystrom, Sutter, Kaler, Boutelier, the other Sutter, all one point. So everybody on the team pretty much got something done for them to an extent. And then goaltending-wise, Billy Smith was pretty dominant. 940 save percentage and a 1.91 goals against average in five games. Did he have any assists actually out of curiosity? No, he did not. Okay. And then in terms of the Edmonton Oilers, Paul Coffey, six points in five games. Wow. That's really good. Glenn Anderson, four points. Willie Lindstrom and Curry, three points. And Gretzky, somehow only one goal in five games, even though I made him a 97 overall. So I don't know how that's possible, but okay. Semenko, Conacher, Messier as well, one point. Same with McClelland and Hughes, Huddy and Lindsman. And then everybody else had no points. Goalie was Grant Fuhrer was not actually that good. 2.96 goals against average, a 913 save percentage, and he went 1 and 4. While Andy Moog, who played some of one game, he had a 916 save percentage and a 2.12 goals against average. 
Okay, so that is it for this episode of our Stanley Cup Finals rematch series. So next episode, like I said, might be a gold medal rematch. That'll probably be one of the ones from the 90s, and then we'll move on to the 2000s eventually. Uh, but then the next Stanley Cup Finals rematch, you will see, guys will see, it will be 1994. That one will probably be in February if I'm doing a gold medal one in January. And then uh, after that Stanley Cup Finals rematch, there will also be the 2003 Finals, probably in April. And then into uh, the 1997 Finals will be in, in, I guess, in June, if I do it that way. But we'll see how it works and whatnot. So let me know what you guys think about this series because I'm still toying with still ideas for more of the series. I know you guys really liked it in NHL 18 and I hope you still like it here in NHL 19 because there's a lot of cup finals still that we could technically do even in NHL 20, 21, etc. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys next time.